Welcome to my madness, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Mezco 112 Classic Spider-Man that just got released. I'm very excited to have been able to pick this one up because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, as you guys know. And uh, this one was something I was really, really looking forward to. Now we're going to kind of do a basic overview on this guy. I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions. We're going to do some comparisons with some of the other figures that you see back there. But first, before we get into all that, let's talk about accessories because I will tell you what, this guy comes with a ton of them. Now, to go through the list here, he does come with a really nice, amazing Spider-Man articulated stand. He comes with just a ton of web effects of all kinds. He comes with a total of nine sets of hands that you can use for this guy, which is absolutely fantastic. He does come with a, uh, a mask, a spare mask that you can have him holding in his hand, depending on what head you actually want to use on the figure. And then, of course, he does also come with a web backpack and a web parachute, which I will show you guys right here. And I am not the best when it comes to posing my figures, but you hopefully get the idea of what he's going to look like when he's decked out with his backpack and parachute. Then, of course, he also does come with a couple of cameras there and the straps for the cameras to put those around his neck as Peter Parker. He does come with a uh, Spidey Sense web effect or, or excuse me just an effect that you can actually put on the stand behind his head for posing he comes with a newspaper and then of course he comes with four spare heads now two of them are the exact same as far as the sculpt itself but one of them actually has a light up feature where the eyes light up and as you can see here uh these pictures aren't the greatest but it does give you an idea of what that's going to look like trust me outside of a picture it looks way better than what you're seeing right there it is a pretty cool uh kind of add-on and uh effect that you can have there with the figure i love it and then of course he does come with a more ditko-esque looking head sculpt as well with a little bit smaller eyes he comes with the half peter parker half spider-man kind of spider sense head sculpt that you can have on him there and then he comes with just a plain peter parker head and a pair of glasses that you can put on him as Peter Parker. So a ton, just a ton of accessories comes with this guy, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, as far as the figure itself goes, I think he looks, well, amazing, quite honestly there. I think they did a fantastic job. Now, Mezco really is one of those things that, um, you know, some people love them, some people absolutely hate them. Uh, it actually took me a long time to warm up to Mezco's, you know, cloth goods style. Um, I didn't like him at first, and over the years I've kind of warmed up to him, and I have a decent small collection of Mezco figures. And so I've gotten to where I actually do like them now at this point. I do think they look better with some characters more so than others. But I think in this case, while normally with Spider-Man, cloth goods is not something I'm a big fan of, when you have a figure like this where you're going for more of a 1960s Ditko era classic Spider-Man, I think it looks really, really nice. Because, you know, I mean, it looks like a guy, a kid in this case, in a suit. And it just looks absolutely amazing. The webs all over the, the suit are done beautifully. The logo on the front looks great. Logo on the back looks great. The belt piece there, uh, the webbing on the legs and on the arms look amazing. I think they did, in general, a fantastic job. The head sculpt on this one, which is my favorite one. This one also happens to be the light up one. I think just it just looks fantastic. It really, really does. And again, I'm gonna be biased because I am a huge Spider-Man fan, but I think they did a great job when it comes to this guy. Now, as far as articulation goes, it's pretty standard stuff for Mezco, so I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, the biggest issue I have with Mezco doing a Spider-Man type figure is going to be the lack of, you know, torso articulation. Um, it's just, you know, they don't have ab crunches. They've got that ball joint there at the top and the bottom, and so you get a little bit of forward but not much and a little bit more back than you do forward but still not a lot compared to let's say marvel legends where you have actual ab crunches and things like that now that being said he looks up pretty decent 
looks down really, really well. Um, standard double jointed elbows and knees, standard wrists and ankles and shoulders. Um, you know, you can get him in there doing the uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, if you bring the uh, legs all the way back, he can kick his own ass. So he can get into some good poses there, even though I am not good at putting action figures into poses. There is a lot to work with there. But when it comes to articulation, obviously where it falls short is going to be that torso articulation that just can't keep up with some other companies are doing just because of the style that they choose to go with there. So all in all, I think it's really good. I love the look of it. The articulation is good enough for me as somebody who's not going to put this into crazy poses, but that might be an issue for you. But I just I just think it looks fantastic as just a good, solid, classic Spider-Man. Now. To show you guys some comparisons here, we'll take uh, kind of our uh, more or less two classic Spider-Man figures that we have here from Marvel Legends. And uh, you know, you can see we've got the uh, animated Spider-Man here on the right. We've got the kind of, uh, uh, you know, first appearance, Amazing Fantasy 15, Ditko Spider-Man there on the left. And they're all about the same height. Obviously, the head on the Mezco is going to be considerably bigger than these two. These have more uh, of a kind of a smaller superhero head compared to the more muscular body as opposed to this one here, which honestly looks more the way that Spider-Man was drawn by Steve Ditko back in the 1960s. He was supposed to be a 16-year-old nerdy kid who put a homemade costume on and went out and became a hero. And I think from that point of view, this one definitely looks a lot more like what I remember reading. Not that I was around in the 1960s, but I've read many of those comics. This looks much, much more like what I remember from those early days of Spider-Man as opposed to these two here. Even though I love these two figures, they don't quite capture that era of Spider-Man the way this Mezco one does. Now, if we look at kind of what the latest and greatest Spider-Man is here. This is kind of the go-to for a lot of people, which is the Renew Your Vows Spider-Man. Now, this evokes much more of a 90s era Spider-Man for me. Uh, I would say for, for me personally, this reminds me of the Eric Larson artwork of the early to mid 90s for Spider-Man, which I was a huge fan of and I thought he did a great job, but he was obviously drawing a much older Spider-Man who by that point, had kind of become known for kind of being a little bit bigger and ripped and all that kind of stuff as opposed to the small skinny 16 year old kid that Ditko drew so this is very fitting of that era but again we're talking about an original Spider-Man here and this maintains that look very well now depending on what your personal preference is you may like one over the other and if you're only looking for like one perfect Spider-Man for your collection you're going to go with whichever era is more your personal favorite Spider-Man. But if you don't have to choose, these are both great options. And then, of course, we have something like this right here, where while this is a live action movie version, Andrew Garfield is still a great representation of what a Spider-Man suit should look like. And I think these two work really, really well together even though, quite honestly, this looks more live action than this one does, even though well, this is the live action one, and this is the comic book version. Two very different figures, both evoke the same feeling. We both know this is Spider-Man, and I think they look absolutely fantastic. And now, for the comparison, I think a, a lot of people, if you're looking at picking up this Mezco figure here, this is the comparison you really need to, to worry about because of the fact that these are two higher-end Spider-Man figures. They are roughly $20 to $30 apart in price. And so if you're looking for like one really good Spider-Man that you're gonna spend a decent chunk of money on, these are probably the two go-tos that are out right now. And of course, we've got the Mafex 185 that runs probably 20 to 30 bucks less than this new Mezco does. Now, they're both phenomenal. And I will say, I've said for a long time, I think this hands down is the greatest Spider-Man figure that we have ever gotten. And Obviously, there are differences here, not just in color or design and, uh, you know, just the way the figure is made because we've got cloth goods versus non-cloth goods here, but just the kind of differences in articulation and what kind of feeling it evokes. To me, this does not scream Teenage Spider-Man, whereas this one totally does. 
this one does not scream Steve Ditko, whereas this one totally does. Now, that being said, if I had to just pick one Spider-Man, and it was between these two, I'm, I'm going to be real honest, it, it's still going to be the Mafex 185. I still think this is the best Spider-Man figure we have ever gotten. But, I don't have to choose just one, and I think this is by far the best early version of Spider-Man, or Steve Ditko era version of Spider-Man, I have absolutely ever seen, and I'm very, very happy to have it. Now, I want to show you what this guy looks like when we do a couple head swaps here so we can see how he works with some of these other heads. All right, so first up, we have kind of the classic Ditko looking head, and this is about the best Steve Ditko you know, rendition of Spider-Man head sculpt that I have ever seen, hands down, without a doubt. And then, of course, we have the half Peter Parker, half Spider-Man, kind of Spider-Sense head, which just, I mean, I think this is fantastic. This looks great just as is, and I think works really, really well for display purposes. And then, of course, we just have our plain Peter Parker head with the glasses. Now, of course, you can take the glasses off, and then you just kind of have a kind of classic Peter Parker head there. And certainly that looks phenomenal as well. All right, so we got to talk about price here real quick. This guy ain't cheap, okay? He goes for about $120, depending on where you pick him up. And then, you know, if you're picking him up online, you're going to be paying shipping on that as well. And of course, pretty much anywhere you pick him up, you're going to be paying taxes on that. So the question comes down to whether or not it's worth it. Because at that point, you're paying probably at least $130 for this guy. And yes, he comes with a ton of accessories. But in the end, is it worth it? Especially, as we talked about earlier, if you can get a Mafex version for, let's say, about 100 bucks, give or take. Um, and honestly, I mean, that is obviously personal preference. I would say for me, it is definitely worth it at that price. I love the way this guy looks. Again, this is by far the best Ditko era Spider-Man I have ever seen. And I think they did a absolutely phenomenal job with him. I think it just, I think they knocked it out of the park when it comes to this. Again, if I was looking to just get one Spider-Man for my display, would I spend $130 on this guy? No, I wouldn't. I would get the Mafex for about 30 bucks less and feel like I had a little bit better of a representation of Spider-Man throughout the years as opposed to this being very specific to the Ditko era. But I still think it's worth it. I really, really do. I, I, I gladly forked over my money for this guy. And as I sit here and do this video and play around with him, I'm still very, very happy to have him and very glad that he's going to be on display in my collection because I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, a lot of times it's just, you know, you're finally getting a hold of that new thing. So you love that new thing better than you eventually will. But at this point, I would have to say, even though I still think the Mafex is the best Spider-Man figure we've ever gotten, this may be a solid second place runner up there because I think it is absolutely fantastic and amazing. And I definitely think it's worth the price, especially when you consider all the accessories and what you're getting with this guy and the fact that you are getting a look for him that has not been ever done this well before. Uh, in the history of Spider-Man action figures, and I think that's absolutely amazing. So in the end, yes, I do think he is totally worth it, and if, as we net let him fall down, if you are in the market for this guy and you've already judged the price and determined it is something you are willing to put out on this guy, I think if you pick him up, you will be very, very happy with what you get when you finally get a hold of this guy. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out and watching this video. I always do appreciate it. And as I always love to say, always remember to enjoy your collection.